Today I'm refuting Eric's claim that alternative fuel vehicles, specifically hybrids and electric cars, are failing to produce the anticipated benefits of saving the Earth's natural resources. Although the claims made were persuasive, they were lacking credibility. The claims made had no reference to where his information came from. This omission perhaps can be attributed to NERS, but after researching the sources used as evidence showed as evidence showed how the how, uh, as evidence showed how they undermined his claim relevance. Take for instance the article written by Keith Naughty. Mr. Naughton's article, Assaulted Batteries, primarily discussed the high cost of replacing large batteries that hold high levels of harmful and toxic chemicals that is mentioned in Eric's speech. However, nowhere in the article does it discuss the negative effects that alternative fueled cars have on the environment. Rather, the article discusses how batteries cost how battery costs and how battery costs are improving and how battery life is improving. This is problematic because this undermines Eric's claim. According to the article, hybrid companies like Toyota are improving battery life. They initially had to replace 1% of the first generation Prius which equates to one out of 40,000 cars sold. It significantly cut its replacement to 0.003% on its second generation of cars, suggesting that there will be less of the harmful batteries used. This article was not wasted. It was used to help establish the factual claim of the argument. This brings me to my second claim, uh, my second uh, refutation to this claim, which concerns the dangers of recycling the batteries. According to the second supporting claim, the recycling process, even done in the proper manner, will be harmful to the environment. However, there is no, um, however, there is evidence to suggest otherwise. According to the Battery Solutions, a company that offers easy-to-use recycling kits and services, um, hybrid automated automotive batteries are are recyclable. They make this possible by give, uh, by selling recycling kits and services, which would be which include not just only hybrid <coughs> automotive batteries, but any other um, product that has the toxic uh, chemicals that need to be recycled properly. They also um, allow any amount of product to be uh, recycled. The third claim that is made concerns the continued dependency on other countries. Although countries like China hold a monopoly on the graphite, which is a key component of the alternative fuel cars, the dependency is an initial one. The U.S. Department of Energy writes on their website that we may never eliminate our need to import oil, but we can reduce the cartel market control and economic impact of the price shock by reducing our demand. And that's what hybrid cars or alternative fuel cars purport to do. The, thir the claim that uh, the dependency would be uh, eliminated by hybrid cars is not made by the company, but um, it is. It does suggest that we need to lessen it, and that's what they're doing. So, in conclusion, although the alternative fuel cars are expensive and contribute to the benefits, or contribute to um, to uh, negative, I guess negatively impacting the environment, it's a much better alternative to uh, cars that we typically drive that are powered by gasoline, and they are continuing to produce the anticipated benefits.
Well, you start off suggesting that there's a lack of evidence from the advocate on these points, and I'm, I'm looking for uh, a specific analysis of the advocate's evidence and how it is insufficient to support the claims that are being presented. And I don't really get that. I get some general explanation of what the advocate's evidence says. Sometimes I get a little bit of counter evidence and explanation, but I didn't really uh, understand why it is that the advocate's information is uh, under un insufficient to advance the, the particular point. On the first point, I think maybe that, that you have got a legitimate argument here because it sounds like really the article is talking about uh, batteries and our ability to um, reduce the cost of those batteries and reduce our uh, need to uh, replace those batteries. And that seems to suggest the opposite of what the advocate's talking about. Uh, so I, I can kind of see how that information might support that particular point. On the second point, though, when you talk about recycling, I don't know what the advocate's evidence was on this particular point. All I have from you is that some information that these batteries can be recycled, but I don't know how much of the recycling takes out whatever is dangerous about the batteries. I don't know. Uh, you know, that this is going to get better or worse. Uh, I have no way of comparing what the advocate said to what you're talking about. It's just a very generic statement that you've got on this particular point. On the third point, uh, your argument is really about uh, diminishing our uh, dependence on uh, these kinds of imports, but your example has to do with oil, not the minerals that the advocate was talking about. And although I appreciate the notion that we're trying to reduce our dependency on other uh, resources in the long run, I I think the advocate's argument here was talking about our dependency on, for this particular resource, not just the oil resources. So it, I'm not sure that that's as contradictory as it needs to be on this particular point. Uh, you do a lot of reading and you need to try and uh, connect with the audience a little bit more uh, so that we can understand those points. And sometimes it just feels like you are into your point and you're going to get through it and read it regardless of whether or not we understand it. And I think you need to kind of pause a little bit and see that your ideas are connecting with the audience too. All right, thank you.